Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the church next door. So great to see all of you here in this room. Wonderful to be with you. We've got some wonderful people outside as well, and uh, we've got wonderful people online. It is great to be with all of you here tonight on the third night, the third weekend, really, of our summer camp, summer series. Now, we've done two weeks, uh, six sessions of summer camp so far. That was all about prayer. And if you missed any of those, we did why, how, when, healing prayer, intercessory prayer, listening prayer. If you've missed any of those, you can text us at the church number 888-644-4034, and we can send you the videos. You will not find them unless you communicate with us. We're going to force your hand a little bit, okay? But if you will communicate with us, we will send you the videos. You know, I told a story when I talked about listening prayer I said that I spent two years trying to figure out what prayer was, and there were various resources that I used, a couple books, local pastors, et cetera. This could be a resource for you. If you're trying to figure out what prayer is, how to do it, how it works in your life, we've got these six videos. They're going to get you going, and if you text us, we will get them to you. This weekend, we're going to pivot a little bit. We're going to move slightly away from prayer into something that's distinct but still related. We're gonna spend the next six sessions, next two weekends, talking about worship. First thing we wanna talk about tonight is why worship, and we didn't figure that there was anybody better to answer that question for us than our worship leader, Sam. So, yes. So, Sam is with us tonight, and uh, together we're gonna answer this question, why worship. Actually, Sam, we're not gonna start with a why, though, We are going to start with a what, and uh, we figured the best way to begin tonight is just to to ask, what is a worship leader? So since you are one, you can jump in here, and uh, you can answer this question for us. What is a worship leader? Yeah, well, it's, uh, I will say, just to start out, it is a little bit different sitting here uh, looking at all of you and not having uh, an instrument to hide behind. (laughs) Yes. But I I do want you to know it's, um, I think I've taught a few other times, um, to the biggest capacity, I think, was when I was able to speak for Pastor Doyle's small group. And uh, I kind of realized I enjoy teaching. Uh, it might not be necessarily, the, it depends on the, the quantity of people, but I think this is good. We believe in growth and taking big steps and doing things that we might not be comfortable with all the time. <laughs> but uh, as Pastor Doug said, I'm going to try my best to give you um, and, and paint a picture of what a worship leader uh, is to me and why we worship and, and why that's so crucial to us as believers. And um, I think I also really appreciate the fact that sometimes it's really good for us to go to um, simple things in Scripture that are foundational, uh, to go back and know why we believe those things and, and to know, because I think sometimes for myself especially, I tend to gloss over them. I take them for granted sometimes, and I think it can be enriching um, and kind of grow our faith and encourage us as believers to look back at uh, worship, prayer, and uh, we'll look at the Holy Spirit. Those things are so crucial to us. So uh, that being said, looking at what is a worship leader, I went back and I, I was thinking about kind of my uh, time here at the church next door. I was, I've been here since it was Lincoln Baptist. I have uh, grew up here. My parents went uh, long before I did. And so I've seen it go through all different phases. I remember when in here there were basketball hoops on either side. There was a scoreboard right in this corner. And uh, yeah, I've, I've had my share of injuries in this room, so I'm sure you might find some of my blood underneath that carpet. Oh. <laughs> that being said, blood, sweat, and tears were, were given in this place. And uh, through, through the time that I spent in children's ministry, growing up with the kids around me, growing up in youth group, I started to see what leadership looked like, what um, roles looked like in ministry. And uh, I was so blessed in that way. And um, there were a lot of different pictures of what that looked like through different examples, uh, different people that I was able to interact with. So specifically, really, when it started to hit me when I looked at what is a worship leader was in youth group. Um, I started going and I uh, the, the, wor- the, the worship leader for the youth group at the time uh, was a man named Cody. And I had a lot of time spent with him just because he had a lot of 
uh, things that I was interested in as well. He was an artist. Uh, he read lots of comic books. I was interested in those things. I know Doug can attest to that as well. But what I started to see was because of the time that I spent with him, both in private and also corporately, which is what we call this on the weekends, corporate worship, I saw that he genuinely was striving to um, see God's will done, um, that he had a heart for God's people, and uh, that he also had a heart for God's word. And it wasn't just something that was put on uh, at, you know, seven o'clock on a Wednesday. It was something that I saw that he even struggled with. Uh, there were times where you, would, you might have one reaction or uh, you, you wanted to always choose what God would have you do in those situations. And so for him, he was a great example in my life of that. So just to reiterate, the, the things that he kind of showed me were, um, and what I believe is at the core in the heart of being um, a worship leader is a heart for God um, and seeing his will done um, and seeing his kingdom coming in the, the community, in the world, in the relationships that you and I have daily. Um, having a heart for the people of God, uh, the other believers like us in this room right now, but also those that don't know God, that have been far from God, and um, understanding why Jesus died for them, why that was so important, and uh, knowing his word, because you won't know how to act or react unless you know his word and you spend time in it, because you begin to see examples and um, stories of people that learned how to act and react in those uh, moments. I think that's a great answer. You know, uh, there are less than great answers when it comes to what is a worship leader. You know, I mean, it's somebody that's rich and famous singing the Jesus music, as a recent documentary called it, you know. Um, that, that, you know, just somebody that has the ability, hey, I can play a guitar, I can sing a song, I can write a lyric. But I love how you said a worship leader is somebody has a heart for God, heart for God's people, knows God's word, puts all three of those together and just wants to extend that, wants to apply that to other people. I think that is a, a beautiful answer. So that then leads us into the next stage of this. We're, we're, we're gonna look at you a little personally from your personal experience, draw some general truths out. Why did you personally, Sam, want to be a worship leader? Yeah, uh, again, it was, it was great to look back and um, when Pastor Doyle and I sat down, I believe it was uh, 2017 now, uh, before I took this position, he and I met, I think, three times. The first time I said, I think I'm interested in leading worship uh, full-time for the church next door, and that was a great meeting. I had the second meeting, and I said, I don't know if I should be leading worship for the church next door, and that was also a good meeting. And then we had the third meeting, and I said, you know what? I spent some time um, thinking, praying, spending time with God. And also, um, I had a great conversation with Pastor Doyle about just what that looked like. And um, also realizing and remembering the relationships that I have with so many of you here, um, it really encouraged me and realized that there was a great work that could be done uh, here in, in Columbus, and hopefully it affects others and abroad. Uh, so that, that was kind of like the, the jumping off point. But if you go back a little bit further, going back into the youth group uh, where I started, I started playing keyboard. Cody was the one that encouraged me. He had, we had two keyboards set up, and I'm sure I was like, almost muted, almost like just about there, very, very low in the overall sound mix. But what that allowed me to do was, you know, get my feet wet and get, get kind of into worship from the stage, corporate worship with other people. And uh, through the time, I was able to see the transformative nature of being a worship leader by the lives and the testimonies around me, by the other worship leaders on the team, by the other youth leaders. And then from the youth group worship team, I worked my way into, uh, I think I was still a teenager when I started, you know, out here on, on the weekends. I was seeing daily examples of, of people that were kind of just completely surrendering. And that, that goes into why I want to be a worship leader, but surrendering everything they had for God's kingdom because they realize that there's something so much bigger and so much more important than kind of 
the, the songs, the notes, uh, the, the parts that we sing, there's something greater um, and something transformative at the heart of that. And that's kind of, uh, yeah, it, worship was so encouraging to me to see that it was not just about the music, not just about what we're singing or saying, um, but w- how we come together and we just say we are insufficient. We've tried it by our own means for the longest time. And now we realize that God is good and he is more than sufficient and that we're going to press into his will to see his kingdom come. Yeah, I, I like that definition that worship is surrendering to God. I'd not really heard that before. I, I always like to say worship is seeing God's goodness and then saying his goodness. But I realize that's just describing the action. When you say that worship is surrendering to God, you are describing the attitude. And so you're saying that as you played these, you know, the music is the vehicle, but what you see accomplished is uh, this attitude developing in people, this surrendering to God, resulting in transformation. You wanted to have that kingdom impact. In fact, that's a phrase that you have here, kingdom impact. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so uh, that that first, uh, in your notes, that first one, it says you can have, at the end of this, there's a question mark. I promise it wasn't supposed to be there. It's not a question. It is a statement. But uh, it's you can have a kingdom impact and not be employed by the church. So I kind of want to just very briefly look at that and what I mean by that. So something that was really encouraging and um, uh, uh, material, like you said, and we're hoping that all of these studies become that, that I was looking at, it was a podcast I was listening to, and um, the gentleman kind of breaks down, I, I love theology, I love the Bible, I love knowing why I believe what I believe, because I believe if God is who he says he is, then it, it'll prove that he's faithful. And so I, I'm kind of a nerd about it. I love listening to podcasts and stuff about the Bible. And he was talking about uh, Paul, And in Acts 18, Acts 20, and I think there's one other spot, he was talking about how Paul was a tent maker. And, you know, not that there's nothing really special about that right off the bat until you realize he's doing ministry on top of being a tent maker. And he's speaking in reference to somebody else that um, also makes tents as well, I think in um, chapter 18 in Acts. But that's so cool to me to see Um, yes, I am, you know, I am here working full-time employed by the church, but that doesn't exclude anyone else in the body of Christ from having a kingdom impact all the time. And, uh, that's why anytime that I get to come together with my, with our worship team, with, um, the tower team or anything, whether it be just to, just to hang out or to practice, to prepare for the weekend, ultimately, we are all leaders in that moment, and we're looking to see that kingdom impact. And I, I love to see all the diversity. And uh, we've had multiple nurses and um, just different jobs of people on the worship team and single moms and uh, single dads. And just the fact that they're making time and they realize the importance of seeing hearts changed and transformed uh, for Christ, how important that is, and that it's life-altering, that, that there is no other uh, kind of greater goal than that. And so uh, in, I believe, Acts 20, 33 through 35, uh, it's in your notes if you want to look at that really quickly. This is in reference to what I was talking about. It's, it's Paul. Um, he's letting them know kind of what's going on in his life. He says, I have never coveted anyone's silver or gold or fine clothes. You know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs and even the needs of those who are with me. And I've been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So through all of that, there's some great you know, points in it, but I want you to realize what he's saying is, not only am I making tents and impacting people day to day in that way, I'm also doing ministry as well. So, yeah, absolutely. And so I think that's kind of implied in this phrase that we have worship leader. You are leading that kingdom impact or a person or a team is leading that kingdom impact. But the idea is that other people start to join in having that key. So because you're not a leader if you're the only one doing it. Right. You're just, I don't know, a person, a guy, the worship guy. But uh, we we want the worship team to be worship leading in which other people are coming in. 
having this kingdom impact through this thing that we call worship. I think that's a great idea that you're bringing out here from Acts 20. We want to take it a little further. We've got another question that we want to ask, getting a little more specific as we uh, think about this idea of why worship. This one is a why. We've done our what. This one is, is a why. And it's the question, why is God worthy to be worshipped? Now, the word worship implies this idea of worthiness. They start with the same root, W-O-R, which is difficult for Ohioans uh, like myself to say worthy. It's like Amen. rural. My <laughs> daughter was asking me about rural the other day. I said, I can't say that word. I'm from Ohio. <laughs> you know, I cannot pronounce so. But worthy and worship, they go together. And when we, we worship something because it's worthy of it. So why is God worthy to be worshipped? That's a great question. <laughs> it was also very daunting. He and I sat down, we were chatting about it, and I was like, another core element of our belief. And, uh, you know, sometimes having those hard conversations with people, they, they, they will ask these types of things. So I think it's so important to know that. Um, really quickly to backtrack, I just want to, sure. I, I love that you put emphasis. Don't make me say rural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I won't. I'll skip right over that. Um, no, just to backtrack, the, the thing about having worship leaders or having team leaders on the tower, that's something that I think um, started in 2017. I, I, I br thought of that and kind of chewed through it uh, like two years later, 2019, and I realized the importance of that. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I am not, when we're together, I am not just the worship leader that everyone on the stage is called to be a, a leader in any point of ministry in this church, whether you're holding babies or you're uh, meeting kids or greeting out there, you are a leader for the kingdom. And um, I think there's a lot to, you know, in my context, leading worship, there's a lot to know. But and, and to kind of grow through and get better at. But ultimately, our relationship with Christ, we should always be growing, and we should be seeking to do things that help us grow in that way. Um, so to go back to why God is worthy, right. sorry for bouncing around so much. Uh, he, you know, I, I tried to break it down into three points. I try with each of these to think of the core reasons behind each one of these. And so for why God is worthy, the first one that I thought of was, you see his majesty throughout all of creation, throughout everything that he's done. Um, I think everyone realizes the complexity and the beauty of creation. And and I, I believe that even so much to say that those that don't necessarily believe in a God or our God, I believe that they see that beauty and that complexity in creation, and they are just in all of it. And to me, that's one of the reasons I can see God's worth in what he's done, that he cares about us um, and, and how uh, complex our bodies are, but also uh, nature and everything that we interact with and we, we see on a daily basis. Um, but also, this is something that I try to hit on uh, in worship when we're here together on the weekends, is just that God's faithfulness that he does what he says he's going to do. Even if it's not in our timing, we were just talking about that. And that can be really, really tough sometimes, that God is faithful and that you see that in history and you see it in scripture. Now, don't get that confused that those are two separate things because they are one thing. Right. Yeah. Um, he's near to the brokenhearted. He is mighty in battle and he moves in those quiet moments. Even if it feels like we're alone, even if it feels like everything's going wrong, he is there and he cares about you. And uh, I think the Psalms are a perfect example of that. In Psalm 18, actually, it talks about, um, it's a long Psalm, but the, right off the bat, I think the first three verses do a great job of painting a picture of who God is and what he does consistently. So in Psalm 18, it says that he is our safety our refuge, our shield, and our strength. Now, those are, I, I love the Psalms, uh, obviously, as a musician, as a songwriter. I love them because they're practically songs already. Uh, they're very poetic. They're very beautiful. But they talking about God being our refuge, somewhere where we can go, where we feel like we're being um, broken down by the rain or the storm or whatever's going on. He's both our shield and our strength. He protects us but also he, he guides us into battle to do good things for his kingdom. 
That's super cool to me. I love the, the fact that there is imagery like that in the, in the Bible that talks about that. And um, so with that, with the stories of, of God's people throughout Scripture, throughout history, we see his faithfulness, his goodness, and his impact. So uh, in your notes, it says, God constantly shows his worthiness by his track record. He's so good. Yeah, I kind of gave you an impossible task there. <laughs> Tell us in three minutes or less why God is worthy, you know. But uh, th there's no way we can do it, which is why we will continue to not only look to the Psalms, the hymns, the new songs we have now, we'll continue to write new songs because the depth of God's worthiness is so great. But I like what you've pinpointed here. There's creation, there is uh, faithfulness, there is his character and his other actions. Uh, you've summarized it by track record. I think that's a good way to put it because, again, you look at Revelation or you look at these Psalms and these are people, I'm guessing, you can check me, I'm, I'm not sure this is true, but I think Psalm 18 is what David wrote at the end of his life. It, I may have that, it's the same as, as the last chapter of, of 2 Samuel. But here's a person who has lived for decades with the Lord, and he comes there at the end, and he says, yeah, this is what you did for me. So that is worthiness right there. I believe that when we engage that worthiness in this practice that we call worship, we see it and we say it, or we surrender to it, you know? We allow it to begin to transform us, as you have described. We don't come out the same. So describe that a little bit. What happens to us when we worship God, or another way to put it, how does worshiping God affect us? Yeah, uh, that's... Uh, it's something that I, I think from an early age, um, reading through Scripture, there was such an emphasis in our, our household, knowing why you believe what you believe. That's probably where I got the, the nerdiness about yeah. <laughs> theology. Um, but I think when you look at, you can tell how people respond, how they react and how they act if they've spent time with God recently, uh, if they are, and, and kind of like what their background is. A lot of people um, are, like some people are more intuitive in those moments. Uh, we call them empathetic uh, to, okay, you know, something might be going on behind the scenes. And I think as believers, that, that is something that we will come to realize is the more time we spend in God's word, the more time we spend worshiping him, we'll be more sensitive to those moments, knowing how to act and react when we come into contact with other believers who are either struggling or um, other non-believers. Um, and I think in, in Revelation, it was talking about there's this beautiful picture of what's going to be happening uh, and what is happening uh, and how angelic beings are, are reacting to the goodness of God. And that's the passage, um, I believe verse 4 is where we get, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the, the section that I chose was, it just says, you are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and they exist because you created what you pleased. That was something that we talked about at our last worship night, and we sang and we just kept singing because everything in nature, everything in creation and ourselves cry out because we know that he's good, he's faithful, and that there's something so much greater beyond us. And I, yeah, I, I think worship is, uh, it aligns us with his will and his desire. Um, R Romans talks about in uh, Romans 12, I know there's a lot of scripture, some of it's on here, some of it's not, but Romans 12 talks about um, that we're supposed to be transformed uh, in the renewing of our mind uh, so that we know God's good and pleasing will. So that what that's saying is we look to his scripture, we look to his word, we spend time in his presence so that we aren't transformed by the world, we aren't transformed by our social media, uh, by uh, times that we're being drained by, whether it be family members or uh, work relationships, that we are transformed by God's presence so that his will is done, sometimes even when we don't know it's being done. <laughs> yeah, you know, we come in contact with things, and they affect us far more quickly. I'm not sure if that's the proper English or not, but, but they, they affect us far 
quickerly, <laughs> far faster than, than we Very are aware fast. of. I was thinking, Wednesday I was, I was here in the office, and for some reason this, this memory just came back to me of seeing some show with this, this high school band called the Sly Cap. So, now, this is the year 2000. And they did a song, and the first, I don't remember the song's called, but the first line of the song says, who am I kidding? Nothing ever goes my way. And that was 2000. This is 22 years later. That song's still in my head. I only heard it one time. I only heard part of it. But repeatedly, that line has come up in my thinking. Everyone, who am I kidding? Nothing ever goes my way. And I was sitting in there Wednesday up, up in, in our offices there, and I said, why are you spending your time with this? Why are you thinking this thought? This is having a terrible effect upon you. So, you know, there are many wonderful things that happen when we worship, many reasons to worship. It's commanded, it's right, it's deserved, etc. But what you're bringing out here that I think we all need to be aware of what goes in is what comes out, you know? What you feed yourself on is, is what you are, and the Lord is offering us the opportunity to feed ourselves on his goodness and thus become like him. That's, that's a wonderful opportunity. Well, you know, how that opportunity looks, how we live out that opportunity may look different for each of us. You know, if I say worship, you may have one thing in mind. I may think another. Everybody else may, may be thinking something slightly different. How about you dial it in for us a little bit? What does worship look like to you, or what does it look like in general? Yeah. Uh, just to, you know, reiterate what we said at the beginning, that um, you hear this probably a million times in church. Uh, for new believers, it might not be as ingrained, but just a reminder that worship is not just singing. It's not just playing an instrument. Um, it's not just... Uh, listening to, you know, your Spotify playlist. And, and those things are good. I, I don't want you to think that I'm reprimanding you or telling you that those things are bad because I do it every single week. Right, right. <laughs> but I do want you to know that um, whether you are a, a nurse or whether you are a nanny or you're working at an auto parts shop or whatever it is, what you're doing in that moment if you're doing it right, and biblically, you are worshiping God. And, and keeping that at the forefront of our brains. Um, for me, what does worship look like? Uh, I think it can be done, like I said, it can be done in any moment. It can be done in any season because God is faithfully steadfast. So what that means is it's the famous passage in the Bible that says God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So that means that no matter what we're doing, what, no matter whatever we're going through, we're going to worship him and trust him and be confident that he's going to continue to move. He's going to continue to be steadfast. And uh, ultimately that through that, he continues to prove his worthiness. Um, recently, we were, uh, my wife and I were reading a Bible study, and it was, it's going through the Psalms, and it's talking about, uh, there were two separate chapters. There was one that was talking about worshiping in your joy, and then the second chapter was talking about worshiping in your tears. And um, I cannot remember for the life of me which chapter in Psalms it was, uh, but it was talking about just the, the sheer worry and anxiety and fear that David was feeling uh, because of um, what he believed God was allowing to happen. And I, as a kid, that always rattled my brain that I, there were passages like this in Ecclesiastes, which in Ecclesiastes 3 says something like, what's the point? Like, just eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it, and I couldn't believe that the scriptures would say something like that. Like, who let that go? <laughs> but what I ultimately realized was that there's a purpose to those sayings. And, and the reason that we see in the Psalms that David is frustrated and he's crying out and he's saying, God, have you forsaken me? Have you left me behind? Is because they're always broken up kind of into a part A and a part B. Uh, and part B is so cool to me because he always says, but regardless, you are good, God. Everything at the beginning is him being transparent and him being like, God, man, this really stinks. Like I, uh, the, the moment where his son had died mm -hmm. and he is 
crying out, and he is so frustrated, and he doesn't understand what's going on. And then he realizes, and he, he says, okay, my time of mourning is done, and I know that God is faithful, and he will be with me all the days of my life. And that's somebody that's not perfect. He made mistakes, and they're documented. We see them. <laughs> yeah. But what's cool to me is that one of the things that I wrote down through that was that um, worshiping, worship is honoring to God and that it can be done in your joy and in your tears. So when I, we talk about what is worship, worship is, and I'm saying this hopefully, is everything that you do daily. Every, every relationship you have, every interaction, it should ultimately be glorifying and worshiping and exalting the anointed one. Absolutely. You are going to lead us in an example of that. Now, again, there's many different ways to worship. Uh, next week, I'm going to introduce a slightly different one, but we're used to, to music and song as a way to worship around here. So you're going to lead us in a song. In this time, what we want people to do is what we've discussed here. Surrender, experience the goodness of God, allow that to transform us. There certainly are people experiencing joy here tonight. There certainly are people experiencing tears here tonight. We want, wherever you are, whichever group you find yourself in, come together with us, with Sam right now. We're gonna surrender to the Lord and we're gonna experience a time of worship. I'm gonna just give you that last point before all of you, like, that want to know the notes, I've got it. Uh, it says, rejoicing in God will transform every daily interaction and reaction. They might have already put it up because the tower team is awesome and I wasn't paying attention. But uh, rejoicing in God will transform every daily interaction and reaction. So we're talking about relationships, uh, the interaction that you have, but also in that relationship, if somebody says something that's not great or somebody cuts you off on the freeway, what your reaction will look like to that and uh, leading into that song, do you mind, um, do you yep. want to read this verse for us? Actually, uh, Philippians 4, 4 okay. through 7. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. So I'd love to lead, lead you guys in a song. So I'm going to sing this, and you don't have to stand up. Um, the words might be up. If you want to sing along, you can. But I just want this to be a, a time of... Um, really stripping back things. There was a song from a while ago that was called Heart of Worship, and it talked about why we do what we do when we're in um, a time of worship and when we're praising God and we're singing to him. This one's called Nothing Else, and uh, it's just talking about the goodness of God's presence and also just um, saying, God, I'm, I'm sorry if I made it into something that it shouldn't have been, all I want to do is praise you and thank you. So I'm going to sing that in just a second. I have to get my in-ears on. <laughs>
just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry.
So was that a moment of surrender for you? Could you feel yourself touching the things of God and thus being changed, improved by the things of God? I hope so. I want to thank Sam for bringing us this teaching this evening. Really appreciate that. Want to invite you to engage with some more of our worship camp tomorrow. Pastor Doyle and Jennifer are going to talk about the uh, how and the when of worship. So you could always come back. If not, there's online and there will be a video around Monday, Tuesday. So uh, you can still get uh, those teachings next week. We're going to talk about worship as well. You know, the best thing I learned in high school was how to type because the internet was invented and I use that every day, right? We didn't know that back then. Best thing I ever learned, how to type. Best thing I ever learned in college was how to worship. And Honestly, over the next two weeks, if you stick with us, you will learn more here at the church next door about how to worship than what I did when I was in Bible college. So we really hope that you will engage uh, with us during this worship camp this weekend and next weekend. We are going to dismiss now. Before we do, uh, I want to invite you to stick around in just about five minutes. Very quick turnaround. We're going to start uh, The Chosen Movie Outside. A great uh, movie that, again, part of worship, part of instruction, going to bring you closer to God. We got some snacks as well. Some friends will be around. You can talk. You can chat. You can have a good time. So hit the restroom if you need to. Get outside. Grab your snacks. And uh, let's watch Chosen together here in about five minutes. I'm going to bless us before we depart for that, though. So together, let us just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. This song has expressed so much, all of our songs this evening, and the scriptures that you gave us, the discussion that we had has expressed so much, reminded us of so many things. Your faithfulness is great. Your heart is beautiful. To be close to you is a privilege. I pray that over the next two weekends, over the next uh, five services that we have, you will teach us more and more about how to worship you, how to enter your presence. And through that, you will bring us ever closer to you. That's our heart's desire tonight. We offer it to you through the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Hey guys, if you have enjoyed what you've been listening and been encouraged in your faith or somehow God has answered a prayer from being a part of uh, the Church Next Door online, do me a favor, shoot me an email to pastor at tcnd.org. This pastor at tcnd.org or like me on Facebook, send me a message. God bless you. Have a great week. Hope to see you soon.